hello hello everyone back again to tales of Persia. Hmm. well without further ado let's just continue <laughs> but did i say that right or i don't know <laughs> Scout ship setting sail. The map's getting filled in little by little. There's still a long way to go. It's a big world out there. Yeah, that's true. And a lot can happen on the waves. The far seas are unexplored territory for a reason. I'd imagine so. The seasons and the weather can change the sea completely. Oh. Do I sense a budding interest in the sea? Think you're feeling less apathetic about it now? I wouldn't say that. I was just reminded of something someone once said to me. Well, I don't see anything out of the ordinary. Let's slip through town and head for Titania before that changes. So this is your secret hideout. Once I get free... He won't stand a chance. You all had better sleep with one eye open. Look how worried I am. Welcome back! That's Kamoana. <sighs> She's the same age as Diana. Did the Abbey really turn someone so young into a Therian? Please, would you be able to talk to her? Is this a trick? Kamoana may be a Therian, but deep down, she's still a normal little girl who misses her mother. I can't do anything to console her, no matter what I try. But if it were you... You okay? You can call me Medissa, all right? Do I scare you, honey? A little, but not as much as Velvet and Doc. <laughs> but don't you think I'm scary? I had a bad dream earlier. My mommy said I looked scary and that she... She didn't want me anymore. She would never... Your mother would never think that about her daughter. But how do you know? Because I'm... I'm a mother, too. Mothers always love their children, no matter what. No matter if we die. No matter how the world changes. There's nobody who loves you more in the world than... than... It's 
It's okay. You don't have to cry. I hope Kamawana and Medissa won't have to feel so lonely anymore. Yeah. Trying to stop the waterworks gets old fast. Listen, if it's not too personal, was your mother, uh... She's dead. I lost her when I was even younger than you. Oh. I'm sorry to hear that. It's fine. It just means we've got things in common. So no feeling sad and alone, okay? Oh no, I'm fine. I don't feel lonely or anything, I swear. What's gotten into you? You're so strange sometimes. No, I'm not. Eleanor, I'll have you watch over Kamoana and Medissa. Yes, of course. I'd be honored. Thank you. Are exorcists supposed to be so polite to a grand poobah of calamity or whatever? J sure why not? Besides, the demon lord ought to not trouble herself over such trivialities. Velvet, Grimoire's calling for you. She says to bring Lafayette and meet her at the observation tower. Got it. We better get going then. Hey, do you all have mothers? Hmm? Where'd that question come from? Well, after hearing that Velvet, Kamawana, and Eleanor all lost their parents, I just got curious. My mother was a strict, frightening woman, but she died a long time ago. I see. I have no parents either. But the wicked witch who took me in said I was born from a peach that floated down the river. <laughs> Coming from you, I'd almost believe that. A and you, Aizen? We Malakim are formed from untainted mana. Sometimes humans are reborn as Malakim, but they retain no memory of their previous lives. In other words, we don't have blood relations like humans do. I see. By the time I was aware of anything around me, I was already tethered in being called number two. I suppose having no mother means I don't have any memories before that. I told Medissa that losing a mother is painful, but I can't know how painful it is. Go easy on him, Aizen. He's just a kid. I'm just telling it like it is. But listen to me, Lafayette. said. You can share deep connections with other people, even if you don't have a biological family. Malakim, too, can form precious bonds, true friendships, even family. That's right. Your words wouldn't have stopped Medissa if they weren't true in your heart. You really think so? I'm sure of it. It's far better than being a witch born from a peach. <laughs> Nonsense! There's no nobler way to be born! I have an everlasting friendship with a dog, a monkey, a pheasant, and Bienfu. <laughs> I hope he's right. You said that Malakim can have familial ties, but what makes you and your sister siblings if you're not related by blood? Well, a very long time ago, I was born into this world from an Earth Pulse point up on a sacred mountain. I remained in that place for a long while. And then one day, she was born from the very same Earth Pulse point. Before we knew it, we had wound up living together under the same roof. Are two Malakim always siblings if they come from the same Earth Pulse point? No. Other Malakim were born there, but I never felt like they were my family. But something, I don't know what, was different with her. If she was sad, I'd feel sad. And if I was happy, she'd be happy too. She can be abrasive, but when she smiles, it's like nothing else. I swore to myself that whatever happened, I would protect her. I made a pendant from a stone on that sacred mountain and gave it to her as a lucky charm. Of course, she just wears it as a necklace. And your pendant? Did she give that to you? She had the same idea I had. She made the pendant herself and gave it to me as a good luck charm. Without either of us having mentioned a word of it beforehand, we each gave each other pendants in the same shape on the very same day. That's when I really knew that what I had felt all along was true. We were brother and sister. Is that her in the picture? Yeah. 
It's a self-portrait she drew for me on the day I left home. Did you draw her a picture of yourself? No. I don't exactly have an artistic side. Well, I'm sure that if you looked inside her pendant, you'd find a portrait of the person who matters most to her. I hope so. Yeah, and it would be nice if it was you. <laughs> Suddenly it was some, someone else. <laughs> Progress deciphering the book? I have indeed. It turns out there was a second counting song. I've already transcribed it. Would you read it aloud for us, child? Okay. Um, when the eight malevolences overflow, in the culmination of mankind's despair, and Nomenot will bring an end to all peoples and restore them to time immemorial. Four Empyreans shall wield a wrathful sword. And cleave the great devourer, too asunder to sleep beneath the earth, as scarlet moonlight illuminates the evil. The nameless Empyrean hath one heart, the nameless Empyrean hath one body. Oh, yet more delightful material to keep us awake at night. If I'm understanding this right, it's discussing the specific nature of Enominat? That's what I believe, yes. When the eight malevolences overflow in the culmination of mankind's despair, Enominat will bring an end to all peoples. So, when the world is at peak malevolence, Enominat will use that power to bring an end to all. Is that it? He's going to wipe out all of humanity? Is that what the Abbey is after? Is that why they've been trying to bring back Enominat? No. Artorius is not that kind of man. His two primary ideals are the many over one, and the restoration of order through will and reason. He sacrificed Lofi to protect this world, not to eradicate it. You mean that's who he is as far as you know, yeah? People change, Velvet. Perhaps the Shepherd gave up hope. Maybe he lost faith in mankind. Fools prone to sin, endlessly generating malevolence. He's not like that. If that's all true, then what point was there in Lofi's death? Is there anything else in that book? Yes, and no. This copy itself is incomplete. There ought to be further pages, but they're missing. For now, I've done all I can. There must be an original somewhere, right? Without it, I doubt the Abbey would be plotting Enominat's revival. We can be sure they have complete understanding of their Empyrean's nature. But this was the only copy in the Royal Villa. If the original is out there, who knows where it could be? <sighs> it's getting pretty late. Why don't we call it a day? Yeah, let's get some rest. Observation tower. Let's go see, Modesta. You too. Uh, all right, but don't run, or you'll trip. <sighs> Thanks, Eleanor. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> Having some girl trouble, my little Malik. I'm just glad Kamawana and Medissa are starting to feel better. Yeah, they both still have a long way to go, but it's such a relief to see them smiling. 
We've got bigger things to worry about. Hurry up and locate the next Earth Pulse point. Right. Okay. Must you <laughs> always be so blunt, Velvet? I must, in fact. We're up against the Abbey here, and sooner or later they'll find this place. That's true. But still. Do we go find another hideout? No. We'll keep on the offensive. We'll capture the remaining Therians before the Abbey finds us. As a swordsman, I can respect that mindset. I'm not so sure we could hold this place anyway. And we've got no obligation to. I found another Earth Pulse point. It's in the eastern part of East Gand, I think. But that's... All right. We're headed for East Gand. Then our first stop should be Port Taliesin. What is Vian Fu doing there? <laughs> Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> when mankind's despair reaches its pinnacle, Enominot shall reach out and bring an end to all. So that song bothers you too? No matter how many times I read it, I don't see any good in it. Understanding that ancient tongue is difficult, right? Perhaps there's another interpretation? Maybe the end to all actually means an end to all human suffering, for example. That is a possibility. But we're far too lacking in material to know anything for sure. We need the other half of that book. Or some other text on the Nominat. We don't have the time to search for it. Wouldn't even know where to start looking. And don't forget that that book is just a copy. Whoever transcribed it might have made an error too. That's an unexpectedly sharp insight coming from you. <laughs> I'm an expert at errors. Making when errors, you mean. <laughs> Didn't that cause a lot of problems? Well, when she tried to cast a spell from one of the tomes, the spell exploded in her face. It's really her own fault, though. She told me to copy 100 books in three days. That's impossible. Oh, how cruel. Cruel is right. <laughs> She's a real devil, I tell you. A slave driver. Bien Fu, let's go somewhere a little more private, shall we? now. There's no need to worry. I'll make it a half-hearted punishment. <laughs> <laughs> Grimoire always looks like she never wants to do any work, but despite all her grumbling, when she starts a job, she gets it done. And quickly, too. She's frank, but she still takes care not to say anything to hurt anyone's feelings. I have to say, I, I like that in a woman. It's charming. Well... Sorry if I'm inconsiderate and charmless then. <laughs> I didn't mean it like that. You're all still so young and have led different lives. Can't fault you for being you. Well, if you're saying we lack a certain air of maturity, I might not 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 disagree. Wait, not, That's not, for not, sure. <laughs> it's true Lord Artorius has scolded my lack of composure at times. Although I do get the impression that Grimoire has been dependable like that since she was young. And it's a good impression at that. Old Grimm's been that way since the day she was born. I hate to admit it, but her combination of insightful words and deadpan expression has charmed the hearts of many a Moloch. At her peak, she had a fan club 8,848 members strong, and her dinner shows would sell out the day the tickets went on sale. Malachim came by the droves to doze off listening to her live readings of ancient books. Wow! I had no idea she was so popular. Yeah, she's even a regular feature in Who's Who Among Norman. Now that I think about it, I could see how a person could interpret her lethargy as patience and her vague dispassion as maturity and poise. Compared to her, I'm just... <sighs> Were you just trying to imitate her? <sighs> no, I didn't mean to. <laughs> Whether you meant to or not, that kind of felt like her just now. I can see it in you waiting to be awakened. That sophisticated charm. Me? Sophisticated and charming? I don't know. Try talking like her. You know how she lets her sentences trail off. This is your make or break moment here. Uh, all right. I think I know what you mean. Here goes nothing. Oh no, man, you look. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what do you think, Laffy said? Do I sound like her? <laughs> it feels a little off. 
But you're definitely doing it. I think. Aw, uh, you don't have to grow up, Madam Eleanor. You are cute just the way you are. Uh, you stay out of this, Bianfu. <laughs> That I really care, but who ended up winning the fishing competition when we were trying to catch a Therian? Man, that was a while ago. I lost because I came away with nothing. No, it was a draw. As I'm sure everyone remembers, all I fished up were octopus demons. We were competing over who would catch the Therian. Demons didn't count, so my score was 0-2. No, the loss is mine, and I'm not giving it to you. That's not just something <laughs> you can up in the side like that. I put everyone in danger. That should count for negative points. I lost. Who cares? It was all in fun. I care. Every competition <laughs> must have a winner and a loser, no matter what. That's just how I see it. Yeah, I'm with Eisen on this one. It doesn't do anyone any good to make the final results murky. I can't believe I'm going to do this. Eisen, your curse would mean that the odds were stacked against you from the start. That doesn't make for a fair competition, does it? Yeah, she's got a good point. We'll just have to settle the score some other way. What can you guys do? Play cards? Chess? What? Cards are a no-go for me. I'll just end up drawing jokers. <laughs> and I can play shogi, but I don't know chess. Then what about arm wrestling? Would that work? Oh, whoa! Having a demon and a Moloch clasp hands is just asking for trouble with malevolence. <laughs> You're both adults, so why not a drinking contest? That's it! If we have a drinking contest, we'll be able to compete on an even playing field. Yeah, I don't see anything wrong with that. I'll have the crew bring out the drinks. Well, that's one way of resolving it, I suppose. Whatever gets it done, I'm not gonna complain. If you guys are gonna have a drinking contest, you're gonna need some tasty snacks to go with all that alcohol, right? Definitely! Let's go out and fish us some snacks. <laughs> yeah. Let's Let's take out the boat. We can even pick up where we left off our fishing competition. <laughs> Didn't we just figure out he can't really fish? <laughs> Ugh, we were just about to finally resolve this mess. Why'd you have to go and stick your nose into it? What? Why are you yelling at me? I didn't do anything wrong. Be <laughs> Oh, what's happening? Another of those that's dream, I guess. It's sour. So you've kept your sense of taste. In my dreams I have. Nowhere else. Does that make this a dream? It would have to be, wouldn't it? After all. I devoured you. That's right. Don't you go forgetting it. How could I ever forget it? The taste of your... <gasps> How could I ever... Looks like the fog's rolling in. Yep. Eleanor. There's something I want to be sure we get perfectly clear. Um, all right. What is it? Luffy said is not your little Moloch. What? That's all you wanted to say? You realize he doesn't belong to you either, right? Indeed I do. Luffy said's his own person, and not anyone else's. Y you're right. Malachim aren't just tools to be used by exorcists as they pleased. I'll be more careful not to forget that. Good, as long as we're on the same page. <laughs> Since we're on the subject of reminders, you haven't forgotten our little bet, have you, Velvet? You mean the 100 gold on whether I'd break? No, I haven't forgotten. A word of caution. People can fight against pain, but they can't fight against happiness. If you're keen on winning our bet, I'd steer clear of ill-fitting dreams. Sorry to break it to you. But all I have anymore are nightmares. The fog's cleared. 
Good thing we didn't wind up getting lost in it. Of course we didn't. Who do you think is running this ship? A bunch of shameless rogues who are very good at shameless roguery. Roguery. <laughs> <Very> straight. <laughs> but it's strange. These waters don't usually see much fog. Hmm. This used to be the base of operations for a rich trading family. When trouble came knocking, they were ready for it, to say the least. Wow! They must have had a lot of enemies. But that was a long time ago. Nowadays, it's just another town in the middle of nowhere. But even so, to us, it was the big city of our dreams. You know this area well. I grew up near here. Keep on going, and you'll run into a ball. My home village. Then... Latharian is... Yeah, somewhere in my village. Is that okay? No one will know me there. Everyone I knew... I already devoured. Oof. Velvet said a ball was wiped off the map. But it sounds like someone's been coming from there with things to sell. Do you think a new group of settlers moved in? Apparently that merchant Nico is someone Velvet knows. She said something about Artorias having saved the village. Do you think it had something to do with the Earth Pulse point? I can't say. We've heard too many conflicting things. This feels wrong to me. Really, really wrong. We won't find the truth by wandering blindly in the dark. The path forward is our only way. Right. It's not like we can turn back. But Miss Mogulu, what if there's darkness ahead too? Then we'll take a nice nap together. Forever, probably. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just have to go there and see for ourselves. Which way is your village? It's far to the east, through the Morgana woods. I wonder what Velvet's hometown is like. A ball? I've heard about it from other sailors, although that was a long time ago. They said it's a fairly plain place, and it's home to rustic, hospitable folk. That sounds like any country village to me! I wonder if Velvet used to be rustic and hospitable. <laughs> oh, you mean to say she's devious and rude now? N not at all. <laughs> it's okay, you can admit it. It's pretty much the truth. Well, I imagine she was a plain, hard-working girl. Hmm? You really believe that? Call it a guess, really. I bet she was a cheerful, loving sister. Maybe so. Hmm. And now she's the Lord of Calamity. If she sees her former friends, maybe she'll remember some of what she's lost. But what has she lost? Yep. Say, do you know why Velvet was sent to that prison island in the first place? It had to be to funnel the other prisoners' malevolence to a Nominot, right? There's an Earth Pulse point near a ball, right? Wouldn't it have been easier just to leave her there? Lack of food, probably. I heard she devoured the entire village. Could that rumor really be true? Who can say? Let's ask Eisen's coin. You know it doesn't work like that. All right, let's think. Why else would Artorius move Velvet to the island? If she was the first Therian he captured... <gasps> he needed a guinea pig to test out what was written in the ancient book. Precisely. He made a special cage for her in the island prison, where Earth Pulse Point and Malevolence met. Then he used Velvet to test how Therians work. <laughs> I could see him doing that. But turning his own family into an experiment. I'm just offering a theory. But a man willing to sacrifice his brother's life wouldn't likely show mercy to his sister either. 
How could he be capable of such things? Perhaps that's just how badly he wants to save this world. Or perhaps there's no other way it could be saved. Huh? Do you think there'll be ruins at this Earth Pulse Point, too? If you're expecting something like the undersea or underground temples we saw before, you might be setting yourself up for a disappointment. Have you been there before? No. But if there's any such kind of grand structure here, it wasn't recorded in the Abbey's archives. Eastgand has long been a frontier, and civilization here was never really developed. Plus, the land to the east is said to be unstable, making it hard to build anything too large there. Even if a temple had been built there, the shifting earth would likely have swallowed it without a trace. The warship of Inominat may be widespread now, but just a few years ago, Empyrean faith was all but dead. Right. Still, if you actually searched for the ruins, I bet you could come up with something incredible. We've seen underwater and underground temples, so why not a temple in the sky? A temple in the sky? It's a romantic thought, and the ancients were certainly advanced, but... Flying temples are a bit far-fetched, eh? <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's the beauty of magic. Anything could happen. A flying temple, a beautiful woman being sawed in half. The border between dream and reality is as fine as a frog's hair. Maybe you just spend too much time daydreaming. Maybe. <laughs> that voice! Whoa. No! Oh, 
And that's really annoying. Where have you been this whole time? You just up and disappeared! Everyone thinks that you were eaten by a demon! But I knew it couldn't be true. You're too strong to let some crummy demon take you down. You're alive. Oh. Uh. <sighs> it's 
Sorry, I... I didn't mean to embarrass you in front of your friends. I have to let everyone know the good news! You finally come back to us! Nico's alive. She's alive. Don't let your guard down. I've got a bad feeling about this. Well, naturally, we've got a Reaper with us. <laughs> Let's head for a ball. We can ask everyone there exactly what happened. Y yeah. Velvet, I have to ask, are you sure that the other villagers died that day? Well, it's... it's not like I had time to check. Velvet! You're really all right! Oh, thank heavens! It's so good to see you! Where have you been all this time? You never even wrote! But... I don't... I... I thought the whole village was wiped out that day. Yeah... It nearly was. But just when we thought it was all over, Arthur, Lord Artorius saved us! No! It was his doing in the first place! He sacrificed Lafayette! It really was a shame what happened to that poor boy. That's all you have to say? A shame? My brother Loppy died I'm that- I'm sorry. Truly, I am. But you can't lose hope, dear. He's right. What counts is that your brother's still alive. <laughs> He's... alive? He's... What? In your house. Don't worry, we've all pitched in to take care of him. No. I don't. Velvet. <sighs> Velvet. Let's go to your house and see. Yeah. Okay. No way. Luffy... Luffy's alive? What's wrong? <laughs> <laughs> well, that didn't break it. Next time you suspect an illusory art, test out your theory on yourself. You think we're all seeing an illusion? It's possible. It wouldn't be the first time. But an entire village? That shouldn't be possible. Shouldn't be, no. How do we approach this? Try to break it apart at the seams somehow? No. For now, we and our enemies share the same goal. Come on, help me look for the Therian. Sure. I... think I'll stick with Velvet. I won't stop you. Keep a close eye on her. I don't think she's entirely right in the head at the moment. Yeah. What's going on here? Dang it, I want to get My that geo at three spots. <laughs> it hasn't changed a bit. We need to be careful, Velvet. Aizen thinks this could be a trap. You think Nico and everyone are being controlled? I don't know. It's just. You think it could be Melchior's doing. But even so. <sighs> <sighs> Not going to work on me. 
You're insane. People can fight against pain, but... Oh, so this what it means. What she means by fighting against happiness. I won't be deceived by this. You'll open your wound! Sleep. Ever since that day, I found him at the shrine, collapsed on the ground. His wounds healed, but he's never woken up. If he's still alive, that's all that matters. I'll find a way to wake you again, Lafi. I swear I will. We'll be together. Hmm. I don't trust so this. Hard to thank you for this comb after all. So that's where Velvet's comb came from. I think this is maybe like Did a tactic. Lord Artorius really try to sacrifice such a defenseless child? Yeah, tactic too. What's wrong, Lafayette? You don't look like your usual perky self. I'm... I'm okay. I'm just glad Velvet's alright. What? Your name is Lafayette too? <laughs> what a weird coincidence! Uh, yeah. Hey, sorry about all that, you guys. Don't worry about it. What are we going to do now? If it were me, I'd make Luffy said something he really likes for dinner tonight. He can handle soup. Maybe he'll notice the smell of your cooking and it'll wake him up. Yeah, maybe I should. Would you watch after him while I go by what I need? Of course. I am at your beck and call. Is there anything I can do to help too? Yes, please. I'll need you to be my taste tester. Hmm. This could be a tactic to All right. First I'm gonna whip up my special quiche. And then I'll throw in tomato and egg soup and some pudding. I didn't even know your face had smile my <laughs> I mean like a tactic to uh, to throw their uh, what is it called? <laughs> Their purpose of fighting, I guess. I mean, it's possible. But yeah, that's my theory anyway. <laughs> I wonder if they've located the Therian. Let's just leave that to them. You're not curious? Of course I am. But for right now, I want to stay close to Velvet. I've got a really bad feeling about this. Something more important than finding the Therian? Yeah. My stomach is twisted, and I've got a chill up my spine. I'm really scared. Very well. I trust your feelings. We'll leave the Therian to Rokuro and Aizen, and stay with Velvet then. Thanks, Eleanor. Magilu, what will you do? Whatever I feel like. <laughs> As usual. <laughs> I shouldn't have asked. Thanks anyway, Magilu. Are you sure you're doing the right thing? In the end, whatever happens, happens. Wiser words never spoken, right? Hmm. Hey, could I get some eggs, milk, spinach, and tomatoes? And I'd love to know what cheese you'd recommend, too. You got it. And in celebration of your homecoming, I won't even charge. With you cooking up a feast like that, I'm sure Laffy Set will wake up straight away. Thanks. I really appreciate it. You're getting spinach? I can't really handle it myself. You'll never grow up strong if you don't eat your spinach, young lady. <laughs> I'm just fine without it so far, thank you. 
<laughs> she was so oh, weird. <laughs> I'll leave it out just this once. Wow, Velvet. You must be special. Not many folks get to be friends with an exorcist. She's not, not my friend. friend. <laughs> the way you two bicker, I find that hard to believe. Oh, yeah. Do you have any prickle board? Oh, I'm sorry to say that I'm out at the moment. That's fine. I'll hunt some up myself in the tranquil woods. Just like old times. Actually, there haven't been any prickle boars there lately. You should try the Morgana Woods instead. Okay, I'll do that. Thanks for the tip. Hmm. All right. To the Morgana Woods to hunt some prickle boars. Yeah, sure. You don't like spinach, right, Eleanor? Well, you know, I just. All right. It's true, but keep that between us, okay? Velvet really seemed to be enjoying herself at the shop. Quite. And she can really pick out a nice balance of foods while making every gulp count. She seems so cheerful and carefree. That's the real Velvet. I'm sure of it. Yes. An ordinary, dutiful, loving sister. I wish she could have stayed that way. She could have lived a happy life, surrounded by her friends. Just plain Velvet Crow, sister to Lord Artorius. Uh, and maybe not Lord Artorius, but just plain Arthur. A happy, ordinary life for an ordinary girl, with a kind family and supportive friends. Hmm. Heard the news about your brother. I'm happy for you. So, what's your plan now? You guys are snooping around the village. Yeah, we wanted to check out that shrine too, but we got stopped. Apparently, the Abbey's designated it off limits. If there's a Therian around, it's probably there. I'm going to draw it out. If this is a trap, things may turn violent. Either way, this place is about to get a lot less tranquil. The same as everywhere else I've been. You can quit here if you like, but I'm going to keep on fighting the Abbey. And if I try to stop you, you'll insist, I presume. Velvet, no! <laughs> I'll give you one day. Once you've made up your mind, come meet me at the Cape. I'm with him. How tomorrow shakes out depends on what you decide, Velvet. Y your hand. It's. As you can see, I'm a demon. Three years ago, I was the one who attacked this village. I don't want to hear it. Demon or no demon. You're still you! Okay, so you're scary! I'll get used to it. I promise, I'll keep it a secret. Let's just live here in the village like we used to, okay? You, me, and everyone else. Yeah, this feels like... Tactic or some sort of trap. That was rather good, Velvet. Yeah, Luffy said gets a gold star for being such a good taste tester too. Tomorrow, I'll fix you up a nice stew. copy of the book on Enominot. And all the pages are here. Velvet. Hey, Fee. Can I borrow your compass real quick? I'll give it right back. Please? Uh, all right. He really wanted a compass more than anything else.
Just like you, he loved to stare out at the sea, wondering what's on the other side. He wanted to go adventuring someday. Oh, I didn't know that. I bet once he wakes up, you two will be really good friends. So, this is what your life used to be like before everything happened, huh? What's gotten into you? Hmm. Maybe I made the pudding a little too sweet. Wait, what? Wait a minute. Velvet, how do you know what it tastes like? Yeah, this is artificial, isn't it? <sighs> I think I'll get myself some shut eye. But what are you going to do about Dema? Mogulu, are there arts that let the caster manipulate dreams? Huh? Dreams? Why? There is, yes, an art that requires a certain type of Moloch. It envelops you in a fog and reads your regrets, then traps you in a happy dream. An art that reads your regrets and shows you happiness. I'm going to the Cape. Now? What on earth's gotten into you? Velvet. <gasps> Velvet! Don't go. Stay here. Stay with me. This is Fee's compass. I knew it. I knew it. I'm sorry. <laughs> Luffy. No, don't. Wait. Velvet, wait. Don't. Don't leave me here. <laughs> Fog? Is this what Mogilu was talking about? We're going to the Cape Shrine. It's time to drag out the Therian. There you are. Velvet, you have to stop your friends. They keep saying they're going to the Cape, and they just won't listen. The Abbey's forbidden anyone from going inside. You'll all be punished if anyone breaks the rules. I hate to say it, Nico. I think I'm a terrible person. I really thought I could have my old life back again. I could forget everything else. I tried to act like I was doing it for Luffy, but it was all for myself. But I can't forget. I shouldn't forget. Luffy is dead. He was murdered without even knowing why. I will never forgive that. Ever! So get out of my way. If you don't, I'll devour you again! Velvet. Why? Why must you do this? There we go! The truth at last! Whoa, in my way! I'll tell her me surprise. I didn't think you'd actually tough it out. What are you talking about? Focus on the monster, Sweetie Pie. Wow. 
This way. The shrine's through these woods. Hey, mind telling me what the hell's going on? It's a trap. Trap, trap, trap. Our enemies spun an illusion based on Velvet's dreams. That's a nasty little art. But Velvet saw through it all? She did. But even if it's all a dream, such brutality on her part. Eh, Velvet's always been our brutal poodle. But to shake off the dream by herself, now that's something. The boundary between dreams and reality is demarcated solely by one's own heart. What? I'm saying she's wowie zowie cool beans. Come on, we gotta go. <laughs> wowie zowie cool beans. <laughs> all a dream hell even if it wasn't i won't turn back oh what the heck was that <laughs> he just killed himself.
Sorry, Puffs. You're coming with me. Velvet! It's okay. They killed their owner. I deserve all their hate. And then some. But not now. Understand? Once I get my revenge, you can tear me apart if you like. I promise. Until then, I'll need your help. Guess the art finally evaporated. The book! It disappeared! What book? I found a copy of the ancient book with every page still intact. It was in Velvet's house. Artorias' book! The real one might still be there. We should go back to Velvet's house to search for it. Nice. That was one hell of an illusion. I have to admire the skill that went into its construction. The caster probably has a tethered Moloch with a unique power on the same level as my Reaper's curse. I can think of one person who would lay such a wicked trap. Still, we may have a new clue to the nature of Enominot. You found Enominot's book, right, Lafayette? Yeah, in Velvet's house. Then let's hurry to Velvet's house. It's empty. No surprise there. Artorias is too thorough to overlook something like that. If only I'd showed it to you as soon as I found it. Don't beat yourself up over it. We wouldn't have been able to read it without Grimoire anyhow. It was just a dream. All of it. Those are the graves of my sister and her son. He died before he was even born. They're in rough shape. We should lay some flowers. Don't bother. There's no point. A keen insight. Eating one would be cruel enough. But plucking of an innocent course. flower just to offer it as decoration for some memorial. That's not even a sacrifice. Just a cruelty devoid of all purpose. Melchior! As obtuse as ever. I take it you're the one behind the dream fog? I must say, you did well to break for such resolve. If you weren't a Therian, I'd be tempted to take you under my wing. Did you come here to flatter me? Indeed. Although I was already in the neighborhood to retrieve this book. I'll be taking that. This book was compiled by my dear friend, who was also Artorias's mentor and predecessor as head of the Exorcists. It contains the hopes and dreams left by a noble soul, who gave his life for the world that grieved him. It is not for a tainted demon to touch. Like we need your permission! Look who obeyed me for once. Is that... you didn't? Be patient. You'll know everything before long. What we seek is the realization of a perfect order, as tranquil and beautiful as a wildflower in bloom. A perfect order? 
Let's go. There's nothing left for us here. What's it doing there? Wait, that's one of Arthur's. Actually, it's a copy that Lafayette made. Lafay made a copy of the book. He transcribed it all by hand, and then he sold it just to buy me back home. There was something here for us after all. If that's the complete manuscript, we might be able to unravel Inominat's secrets. We'll have to show it to Grimoire. <laughs> Pulling one over on the old man, are you? Never a dull moment with Lady Calamity around. All right. Time to drop off the pups and get Grimoire to translate this book. We're going back to Titania. Okay, I'm gonna end it here for now. Yeah, so... See you in the next video. Bye!